coach in college yourself. Talk to us about what. Welcome to Philadelphia. Mike Corey and Ron Thompson with you tonight as we get ready for the tip between Old Dominion and Drexel. We apologize for the technical difficulties as we get you caught up here and ready for action tonight. Old Dominion with interim head coach Jim Corrigan on the sidelines. Bruiser Flint and the Drexel Dragons and underway here tonight from the deck. Quickly a three. Up and good by Franz Massenet. And the Dragons strike first. Dante Hill for ODU, who have lost 10 games in a row, 2 and 20 on the season. As Aaron Bako drives. And Hill comes back with the first jumper of the game for ODU. Thomas. Into Ruffin in the block. And got it knocked away. Palmore to the basket. No good. Rebound McCoy. Another steal. Painter can't finish. Rebound Damian Lee, who's been on fire for Drexel as of late. Ruffin. Ten to shoot for Drexel. Massinet, and he is fouled by Keenan Palmore. So let's take a look here at interim head coach Jim Corrigan. 19 years as an assistant. Ron on Tuesday was named head coach as they let go of Blaine Taylor. Huge degree of uncertainty has to be going through the minds right now of the players of Old Dominion, Old Dominion because the guy that recruited you in Blaine Taylor, the guy that sat in your living room and convinced you to come play for Old Dominion is no longer there. It'd be really interesting to see if these guys can rally, muster up enough energy because the last victory they had was 47 days ago. Mm -hmm. and that was against Virginia. You and I were there. That was down in Richmond when they won by two. Talked to Coach Corrigan last night around 9.30. As you can imagine what kind of stuff that he has to go through now is just being thrust into this role. He said, you know, I've worked long and hard to become an, a head coach one day, but this is obviously not the way that I would have wanted it to happen. And now he's taking over for the final, at least this season, final eight games of the year as they are 2-20 and 20 on the year, 0-10 in the CAA. Foul on the rebound as Keenan Palmore got it for the Monarchs. Ron, what is the approach yeah, now for Jim Corrigan and ODU for the final eight games of this season? Well, I spoke with him uh, earlier today in practice, and what he said was he said he didn't want to change a whole lot. He said he wanted to see the guys just relax, play hard, and start to have get back to having fun. He really thought that, you know, even though their record doesn't show it, that they're not that far off. So they want to tighten up on some of the little things so they can get this thing going in the right direction. He said, quite obviously, he'd love to go 8-0 the final eight exactly. games. <laughs> Palmore was fouled by Franz Massenet of Drexel, his first. Two minutes gone by, and Old Dominion has a one-point lead. You asked me earlier what I thought was key for Drexel, and I said that Massenet has to be that preseason player of the year that everyone thought he would be, and he started this half so far very aggressive, which is a good sign. Well, how about a couple of early turnovers by Drexel? Three to be exact as Hill tries to make them pay but cannot. Massinet. One for two now from three-point range. Rebound McCoy. Lee tries his luck. And Damian Lee, who comes off a season-low seven points in the loss the other night, or on Saturday at Northeastern. They scored in double figures in every game except two now. 
the Lee got in early foul trouble that game and really threw him out of rhythm. But the three games prior to that, he's poured in 79 points. Ross on the miss for ODU. Thomas pulls up and nails it. Thomas starting to get his shot back, a four-year starter for the Dragons, one of two seniors that see action on the court this year for them as they've lost Chris Fouch for the remainder of the season with an injury, played in the first 15 ball games, or has missed 15 ball games, pardon me. Here's Massinet to the rack for two and a foul. Mike Drexel's really at their best when Massinet's being aggressive. You see, he takes it coast to coast, gets all the way to the basket, takes the hit, and, and has the wherewithal to finish. Now he has to go to the free throw line and complete this three-point play. When he starts to be aggressive offensively, that sets up his ability to penetrate pitch and start to set other guys up. Massinet comes off a 10-point effort in 33 minutes the other day at Northeastern. Puts the Dragons up by four. Foul was on Painter for ODU, his first. Now here's Painter for three. Got it. Don't be surprised by Painter taking that shot. Don't look at his body type and think that that's not something he can do. He can hit that trailer jump shot. The problem is he has to make sure he doesn't fall in love with that shot and start to take too many of them and don't go down in the block and, 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 do, and be most effective. McCoy throws it past Ruffin. Where he played high school and college ball, he had seven different coaches. He was on the JV team at Duke for three years and earned a scholarship in his last year at Duke. So he said, I've had a lot of different experiences and learned many different approaches to things. So hopefully it helps out here for ODU in the stretch run of this season. Traveling violation. Now this team has a lot of young players, seven freshmen, only a couple of seniors. One of them, Ron, is Deshaun Painter. He's a transfer, so it just isn't quite the same ODU team that you're used to. No, usually you have guys that have done it before, have been focal, a, a major focal point in terms of, you know, the wins that you've had. This ball club, you know, you've got guys like Wright and Ross that come off the bench who played support roles last year. They've never been the go-to guy, so all the way across the board, They've had new guys put into situations that they've never been in before. Drexel with five turnovers so far in this first half and 11 offensive possessions. Three-pointer, Baco, not there. Goran Pantovich is in the post. First substitution of the night for Drexel. Here's Lee. Ruffin on the other block, posting up. Massinet. Rebound, Batten. Ross. Good effort on the offensive glass. And he's called for traveling. We were down at Old Dominion on Monday night, Ron, when they took on George Mason. Ross had five blocks in that game. He played with a lot of energy. He's been playing very well as of late. You know, he, he, he hurt his thumb early on. That kind of set him back. And I think he's finally getting accustomed to playing with uh, that, that soft cast on his thumb. And he, he, earlier he was getting his hands on a lot of balls. Now he's coming up with the balls because he's gotten adju adjusted to playing with that cast on his thumb. Another steal. Six turnovers now by the Dragons, and finishing is Palmore. Great team defense that time, and that's one of the points of emphasis that Old Dominion has put on their players the last practice or so, is they felt that the transition D had to get better, and their weak side support defense had to get better. In that possession, Baco did an excellent job of coming over and giving some help. 
And I talked to Bruiser Flint, the head coach of Drexel today. One of his keys was no easy baskets for them off of their defense. And exactly what they didn't want. This is what they do want. Another three-pointer made by Massinet. He's got nine. Pato against McCoy. Batten on the miss three. Massinet and Lee, the top two players for this Drexel team. Good combination is Lee. Pulls up, doesn't go. And here comes Aaron Bako. Nick Wright launches from deep. Good feed from McCoy. He tried one too many passes to Pantovich and another steal. Seven now. Three pointer counted for Bako. And just like that, Ron, Old Dominion has the advantage there. One clear cut thing that we're seeing Old Dominion do a much better job at is they're getting after defensively. Their energy is really good. The communication is really, really high. Thomas comes off the screen and misses the jumper. And McCoy tips it right to Batten. <laughs> Massinet running the show. A lot of scoring comes from the perimeter players for Drexel. Massinet, and he's going to be called for an offensive foul, pushing off. And a timeout. Old Dominion, they've gotten this lead by giving it up on the defensive end. You see right here, a uh, steal right here by Old Dominion coming down in transition. Palmore comes over, he gives help, and he gets the dunk. The next position, Bako comes down in transition, nails the three. ODU's up one. We'll be back in a minute. Fouls for the Drexel Dragons and is out right now as they find themselves trailing by one in the early going here at home to Old Dominion. Mike Corey and Ron Thompson. This is kind of what happened the other night for Drexel. Ron as Damian Lee had a couple of early fouls at Northeastern. The two fouls on Massinet early on can't be understated. You know, he's the one guy that's gotten off to a good start. He has nine points uh, for Drexel and they only have 11. So he single-handedly has kept them in this game. And he's the one that makes that engine go. It'll be interesting to see how long Bruiser Flint leaves him on the side before he brings him back in the game. Aquil Younger is in. The foul was on Darte Ruffin, his first. Good passing by the Monarchs inside for Peter, and he finishes for two. Look at the story here of the turnovers. Drexel already with eight. They average just over 12 a ball game. And that's, you know, if you're, if you're Bruiser Flynn, it's got to be driving you crazy. But with, with those eight turnovers, they're only down three. So if they can cut down those turnovers and get solid shot attempts, they'll be all right. All the meetings on a 10-3 run right now to lead by three. Hill against Younger. Right, tough shot. Bruiser Flint told me today as you see Jim Corrigan for Old Dominion right now as they lead it by three, Bruiser told me, hey, I don't have any problem with our defense right now and our rebounding, it's our offense. They even start to make some more shots. Yeah, they need some guys to step up and start knocking down shots like Thomas just did. And on the interior, I really think Ruffin is the guy for Old Dominion, I mean, for Drexel that can give them some inside scoring.
There's Patton. Painter gathers, doesn't finish, but there is Ross for the basket and the foul. That possession, Ross simply outworked the direction for that ball. That I thought, you know, when the shot went up that McCoy was going to come down with the ball, but Ross always finds a way to keep battling on the inside. Take a look, a look at this as we go through the replay. The ball goes up, and Ross just keeps working. He's sliding around, and he ends up with it in his hands. When you get your hands on the ball, if you're Drexel, you have to secure it, and you can't think that someone else is going to come up with that ball. Great job by Ross keeping his focus on the old boards and finishing the in one. Subs coming in for Bruiser Flint and the Drexel Dragons right now. That was the second foul on Darte Ruffin. He is now out. Massinet is back in with two fouls. And there you go, Ron. Not much time on the bench. Offensive board by Nick Wright. He almost ended up getting four points out of that sequence. Mike, innately, Massinet likes to try to get a little closer to the basket. So when he turns the corner, he has to be careful not to pick up a charge. And if I'm Old Dominion, I'm looking to draw charges on Massinet when he drives. There's the red-shirted freshman, Tavon Allen, missing on the three. Pantovic, the offensive rebound. Allen, wild shot, but draws the foul and will get two. Foul on Dominion, number one, Nick Wright, his first, team's third. At the line for Drexel. First foul on Nick Wright tonight, third team foul. Tavon Allen is a red-shirted freshman out of New Haven, Connecticut. Didn't play in the first couple games of the season. He's actually been in and out of the starting lineup at times this year, Ron, as Drexel's had to fight through some injuries. Well, he's a really, very, very talented freshman. As he gets a little older, a little mature, and starts to understand what's a good shot and what's a bad shot, you're going to see his game take off. Because, but on the offensive end, he's ultra, ultra talented. When he takes threes, he shoots with his left hand. When he takes twos, he shoots with his right hand. Well, you just saw that little scooping <laughs> shot, right, in the, in the lane. You got it. Tied at 16, Old Dominion hanging tough. Saved by Painter from going out. Batten for three. Got it. That's a three by Old Dominion is last in the league in three-point percentage at just over 27% coming in, but they've knocked down a couple here tonight. They're three of seven. Massinet off the McCoy screen for the jumper. Massinet has 11 of the Drexel 18. Painter offensive board Ross. McCoy an 18-footer. That one's good. And Drexel has regained the lead. And if McCoy can hit that shot tonight, that's a huge bonus for Drexel because they really need some of their interior guys to be able to produce some points. What a wild shot by Keenan Palmore and the freshman from Stone Mountain, Georgia's put ODU back on top. Foul here on Dante Hill holding Damian Lee. So ODU hanging tough here tonight. Painter. Some hustle plays. Benton finishes this one on a three, and the Monarchs are up one. Go figure. That has to be really, really frustrating for Bruiser Flint and the Drexel Dragons. You know, on the road, they're six and five, so they have a better road record than they do home record. They really want to turn that around as you come down, you know, this final stretch in conference play. Last home game, they lost a close one to Delaware, 66 to 64. And McCoy knew it right after he passed, looking for Massinet, the ninth turnover of the night for the Dragons. Three-pointer, Baco. Another 
pick off this time by Richard Ross, and he is fouled as he got hit on the head by Daryl McCoy. Ron, telegraphing passes here tonight. Uh, Ross did an excellent job at shooting passing lane, but what he did an even better job of is he knew that McCoy was the one that was going to try and chase him. So he didn't pull it back out. He used his speed, he used his athleticism to get all the way to the basket and now having a ch chance to go make two at the free throw line. Ross is one of the better athletes that you'll see in college basketball this year, regardless of the level, Mike. He's a freak, freak athlete. 13 points, four boards, five blocks, a steal in the last game. He played 36 minutes. They just don't have a lot of depth, but doesn't convert at the free throw line this time. You know, one of the things that you have to take a look at when you look at Ross is you look at his freakish athleticism. He ran track and was a long jumper in high school. So naturally, innately, he can do some things in the court that a lot of basketball players can't. Top scorer, Damian Lee, is out right now for Drexel. Thomas works it down the lane and drew the foul. Palmore is second. I really like the focus that I've seen from Old Dominion, both offensively and defensively. Usually you see them sway from the script a little bit offensively and sort of try to take some shots that they shouldn't. You see them trying to execute what Jim Corrigan wants. And defensively, I haven't seen five guys move on a string in unison the way I've seen tonight in a long time. The interim head coach, Jim Corrigan, taking over on Tuesday, just a couple of days ago, as Blaine Taylor was let go after 12 seasons, 239 wins. It's been a rough year this year for Old Dominion. 2 and 20, 0 oh and 10 in the CAA, but hanging tough here tonight. Batten gets it back. Ross misses. Larson couldn't get the rebound. Damian Lee's back in for the Dragons. Another good defensive play by the Monarchs, and we'll have a tie-up or a timeout. Timeout, Drexel. So Lee diving on the deck to save possession. And Bruiser Flint and the Dragons down early at home. We'll be back. Bruiser Flint told me earlier today, he said, you know, Old Dominion, they let go of their coach. It's only two days later. There's a lot going on. You know, he, he was saying, Ron, he was a little fearful. You know, you never know what they could come out like. And all of a sudden, they've been playing inspired basketball here tonight. Well, you know, that usually happens. When there's a change initially, there's a jolt. Uh, there's a, a burst of energy that takes place. Let's see if they can sustain it for an entire 40 minutes. Nice play by Massinet with a game high 13. Dragons back on top. Batten for three, and he hits it. And all of a sudden tonight, Old Dominion finding the long ball. Four three-pointers. Massinet does it again. Massinet is doing an awesome job, Mike, at carrying the load offensively. We were wondering how long Bruiser Flint was going to leave him out when he picked up his second foul. Bruiser answered our question, not long. Not long at all, as he has 15 points. 
And this time a turnover by ODU. Massinets 15 points away now from 1,000 in his career. Looks like he wants to try to do it tonight. As Thomas throws it away. And about one yards ball. Massinet's showing you his versatility. Known as usually a guy that runs the show, but because of injuries, he's had to become a scorer, and he's picked up his play this evening. He's doing a great job. Good pass right here by McCoy, which is a center with him going back door. He has to be careful, though, with four minutes to go in this half that he does not get his third foul when he's driving in there to the basket. Batten for another three. He does it again as Dimitri Batten. Nine points for him now, all on three-pointers. Foul on ODU, taking us to another timeout. So all of a sudden, Old Dominion finding the range. Five threes over that. Probably should have gotten into the NCAA tournament with the job that they did. They had an excellent run last year. They got overlooked. They wanted this year to be their year. Then all of a sudden they got blitzed with a ton of injuries. Chris Fouch went down for the year. Lee had some injuries this year. But Bruiser Flint's done an awesome, awesome job this year. Six games away, Mike, from being Drexel's all-time leading uh, coach in terms of wins. Drexel actually won the CAA regular season title last year with a win over Old Dominion on the road in Norfolk, 73-72, to where Damian Lee had 24 points in that game. And then Drexel won in the semifinals of the conference tournament last year against ODU, 68-51. Franz Massinet had 20. Another foul here on Baco. And Drexel's in the bunks. You know, you touched on the points the that Franz has had the last two, few games. And when you're a point guard, Mike, and your natural inclination is to set, set the table, get the guys going, then look for yourself. Then all of a sudden, because of injuries and point production, your role now has to change. And for a point guard who traditionally is pass first to have to do that can definitely throw you off. And he's went, gone through an adjustment period this season. Well, Drexel's had to deal with some injuries as well. The guy's in and out of the lineup. There's a three by Peter. Wow. He was trying to show you that the other night, Ron, <laughs> on Monday night against George Mason at home. All he was doing was hitting, shooting outside shots. He finally hit one. Well, and he's, he's hit a couple tonight. He's definitely a, a capable three-point shooter. But for Old Dominion to have success, for this team to try and grab some wins, he's got to get. He's got to mix it up more, do a little bit more work on the block, and then occasionally step out. Well, ODU is really getting into the passing lanes here tonight. Another three-pointer, this one by Hill, that's in and out. Old Dominion's last win was against Virginia back on December 22nd. They hit nine threes in that game. They have six so far here tonight. Allen responds. He's got four. And runs it to a roadblock. McCoy still gets to put up the shot. No good. Thomas. Well, how about this, Ron Thompson? 
Old Dominion getting a lot of points on Drexel turnovers tonight. You know, give Old Dominion a lot of credit for strapping up defensively and, and using their defense to try to generate some offense. And what better way to go on the road and try to grab a win than to try, than then to get after defensively. They forced 12 turnovers already for Drexel on the year. Drexel averages 12 a game. And what does that translate to? That translates to more shot opportunities for Old Dominion. Even though they're not a good field goal shooting team, they have more attempts at the basket than Drexel. Batten with 10 to shoot for ODU. Painter up and under and draws the foul against McCoy. It'll be his second. That time Painter was a little bit closer to the basket and that's why I've been saying we use his size as an advantage right here. He caught the ball on the block. He didn't get the basket, but he's a little bit closer to the basket because a nice up and under move. Now he has a chance to go to the free throw line and put a big for Drexel in foul trouble. When you take a, a jump shot, that's the easiest shot in basketball to get, but the hardest to make. Get closer to the basket, work, bump and grind just a little bit, and put Drexel in foul trouble. Massanet is back in. Deshaun Painter, the senior transfer from NC State, tops in scoring and rebounding for the Monarchs this season. And can't convert once again at the free throw line. Long shot again off the mark, and they're going to call a jump as Ruffin was like over the back on Tate Hill trying to tie him up. ODU ball. One minute to go, first half. Players hitting the deck. That into the hole. Scooping shot just off the mark, and it'll stay with the Monarchs. Out of bounds, Monarchs ball. Checking the game for the minute, number 23, Richard Ross. Richard Ross back in. Almost a 12 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Hill checked by Younger. And now a five second violation. Good defense by Aquil Younger. A little bit of uncertainty by Old Dominion as to which set they wanted to get into. But give Drexel a lot of credit for the defensive pressure that they put on the ball. But coming down the stretch now, 27 shots on the clock. Let's see if they can get a good shot attempt. And again, Massinet has to be very certain if he turns the corner that Old Dominion doesn't slide over and pick up a charge. He'll have three going into half if he does. Now one thing that's going to be pretty safe to say here is that Old Dominion's going to take a lead into the locker room at halftime. They have not done that often this season. Ten seconds left, Massinet. Lee off the screen for three. No good. Right to rebound. Halftime. Old Dominion leading at the half for just the fourth time all.
Welcome back to Philadelphia. Apologize for some of the technical difficulties here tonight. You haven't missed a thing as we are just underway in this second half as Old Dominion leads it by four. Mike Corey and Ron Thompson from the deck in Philadelphia. Inspired basketball by the Monarchs tonight as Palmore puts it in. Drexel turnovers in the first half, the big story. As Thomas hits a three. When they're able to get to their half court sets and not turn it over, they can generate more shots like that, Mike. Painter back the other way, doesn't go, and Thomas has the rebound. Drexel with 12 first half turnovers and 10 made field goals. McCoy puts it in. That's something they didn't do in the first half, was put back-to-back -back baskets together, make a little run. I would have loved to have been in that locker room at halftime, just to be a fly on the wall to hear what Guzzi Flynn had to say to these guys to get them going here in the second. Ross gets bumped and fouled and puts it in. Great job by Old Dominion. It started the second half. They're making a conscious effort to go inside. The first possession, it was a dribble drive penetration. That time they went inside to the low block to Ross, and he delivered. And that's what I meant earlier when I said, Mike, that Old Dominion's done a really good job at st sticking to the script. They're not fraying from their game plan offensively. They're sticking to the script, getting efficient shots, and that's the huge reason why they're up four so far in this game. So far, so good. Second foul on Daryl McCoy for Drexel. Lee is fouled as he attempted to go baseline. Second foul on Dante Hill. And McCoy is fouled by Richard Ross. Darryl McCoy is at the free throw line, but how about Damian Lee? That first half, Ron doesn't have any points. And was 0 for 3 from the field after coming off a season low 7 points at Northeastern on Saturday. They need him to get going. Well, that's a huge part of the tail of the tape for Drexel. They're struggling right now in the half court, not just because they've turned it over, but because other than Massinet, they don't know who they can go to for, for points. Lee's got to get it in gear. Palmore. And really being aggressive tonight on his way to the hole has another foul called on Drexel. When you take a look at Old Dominion and the job they're doing tonight on the offensive end in their half-court offense, it's clear, it's crystal clear that they've made a conscious effort not to settle for jump shots and try and get to the basket. There was maybe a possession or two in the first half when they did rush a couple quick shots, but you're right. For the most part, they haven't done that. That's really been a problem for them, and I think that's probably the reason for a lot of the losses this year. With shot selection and being able to convert uh, uh, sensible looks. And tonight, like we've touched on, they've, they've been patient, they haven't rushed, they've attacked the basket. Aside from Batten and occasionally uh, Painter, the jump shots, we haven't seen too many of them. We've seen a good, aggressive attacking the rim. It's nine points for the freshman Keenan Palmore. Third foul on Franz Massinet for Drexel, by the way. He has it right now. And on his way to the hole, can't convert. Rebound, Darte Ruffin. Palmore, nice dish to right. And they call a tie-up. It's a jump, so it stays at Old Dominion on the alternating possession now. Nice drive right here by Wright. You see, he gets the balls attacking the basket. Again, they aren't settling for jump shots, and he gets good movement. That could have been a foul, but they chose to call it a jump ball. But the action is good by Old Dominion. Painter. 
before that, traveling violation. But you can live with that travel. You can live with that travel because that was a nice, aggressive move by Painter. He wanted to settle for the jump shot. You saw him thinking about it. But he said, nah, you know what? Let me get to the basket and try to make something happen. You can live with that travel. Here's Damian Lee still looking for his first points of the night. Maybe here. No, an offensive foul. An illegal screen going to be on Daryl McCoy. It's going to be his third. And now right at this point in the game, I really think you've got Massinet who set the tone early. McCoy and Ruffin are making some nice little putbacks around the basket. Now is prime time, I really believe, for Damian Lee to step it up and get on the roll. Three fouls now on McCoy. Three on Massinet. Batten. Right as a double team comes crashing down on him, and the foul is going to be called on Lee. Third leading scorer in the CAA, not on track as of yet. But the good news is they're only down by one. And you see a complete donut tonight. And if he can get on the roll just a bit and add somewhat of a boost, Drexel will be in good shape. Dante Hill against Lee. Wants it back. Drives in and lays it in with a left hand. Four points for Dante Hill, the junior transfer from Clemson. Thomas pulls up and hits it. Nine for Thomas trying to step up. And the Dragons get a stop and a chance to take the lead. Ruffin will have to try from the free throw line when we come back. Old Dominion leading by four and a half. A guy that's patted you on your shoulder when you needed it. For him no longer to be there and you'd have to come out and play in a familiar setting where you would normally have him, it's got to be tough on those guys. Very bittersweet for Jim Corrigan who said he has not talked to Blaine Taylor as of yet. I was wondering, did he find that very odd or what? Uh, yeah, to be honest, yes. You know, he's worked as the um, assistant head coach, you know, for the last 12 years or so un under him. A guy that you've been, you know, through all the wars to not to have spoken to him through this tough, tumultuous time. I find that a little strange, but, you know, we'll see. You know, maybe there's a little more to it than we know. Maybe there's a little bit more to it than, than has been released. But we don't under uh, that's, that's a very odd thing to me. Yeah, it's been a very difficult situation nonetheless. They've had a practice, get on a plane. They came up here yesterday. And right now in a fight with Drexel as the Dragons have regained the lead here by a point. And we'll see if they can maintain it. Halmore, basket and a foul on the rebound. Oh, what a play, Nick Wright. Old Dominion doing a great job, as we touched on it, not selling for jumpers, putting Drexel in situations where they have to foul by attacking the basket. Wright goes to the offensive boards, and the Biff gets him with the push. When your motor is high, your energy is good, and you're making hustle plays, good things happen, Mike. You know, when you sit back and take pictures and just watch the action take place, you don't get second chance opportunities like that. Well, this is interesting. You just said a foul on a Biff, uh, Kasembe a Biff, who was not thought to be in the lineup tonight. The sophomore from Elizabeth, New Jersey for Drexel. He was injured and has not played in the last three games. All of a sudden, he's in here. He's called the foul. Well, you know, his timing obviously isn't where it needs to be. And Drexel at a point where they have to try something to, to grab this win. And, and, you know, if you're ready to go, all hands on deck. Hold him in and back up by two. After the three-point play conversion by Wright, now Batten called for the foul. Well, 
second foul on Pat. Massinet out right now for Drexel. And the foul on Palmore. His third, team spin. All of a sudden, ODU racking up the fouls. Five team fouls now on each team in the second half. Hills back in for Palmore. Lee. See if Lee gets into the scoring column here. Still with no points. He's the third leading scorer in the CAA, averaging over 18 a ball game. Credit Old Dominion for the job they've done in locking him down. And again, can't find the range. Of course, that was some NBA range, but... <laughs> Ruffin is fronting Painter in the post. Now he comes to the outside. Ross. Blocking foul called on Lee. Foul on Drexel number 14, David Lee. His second, team's sixth. The Watch this, Lee Ross reads the play perfectly. Just couldn't quite get there and get his feet out of that circle area that you see on the floor right there. If you're in the help position, you have to make sure that you clear that circle area in order to draw a charge. See, this time of year, every both teams know what the other team is going to run. You know, you scouted the team so much, you've seen them play so many times over the course of the year. Neither team is going to hit the other with any surprises. So you see players jumping plays almost there on certain situations. It's going to come down now, Mike, to which players can execute, who sets a solid screen, whose timing is good when you come off of the screen, the little things that your coach always fusses at you about coming to play right now. And Ron, these two teams will meet again at the second the final regular season game of the year on February 28th when the Dragons visit Old Dominion. Now Baco was called for his second for ODU. One more and Drexel will be shooting free throws. Here's Lee on the fadeaway. Still can't find the scoring column. And out of bounds off of Ruffin. Got into early foul trouble at Northeastern over the weekend. Previous three games, you see the graphic, there 79 total points. He was in an absolute tear. But, you know, tonight he's struggling. Give Old Dominion credit for, for being a nuisance and being right in his hip pocket. He has to find a way, though, just to keep taking solid shots and fight through it. Big cut. Good stutter step. Dribble to the basket. For the lay-in. He has five, and ODU is up half a dozen on the road. Looking for their first CAA win this season. They're 0-10, 2-20 overall. Ten to shoot for Drexel. Nassadette for three. Holding fouls, Painter got it in the block. Third on Ruffin. Ruffin is third, team seven. Taking back the game for Drexel, number 11, Tavon Allen, the number 44, Darrell McCoy. Now the line for the mile. McCoy and Allen are back in. Kancevich and a frustrated Damian Lee to the bench. He's 0 for 6 from the field tonight. But someone that shoots as well as he does, if he stays locked into the game, as this game starts, if he stays locked in mentally, right. don't get frustrated, don't, don't let your mind start to drift. He's too talented and too good of a shooter to not to be able to help this ball club as they come down the stretch in this final 12 minutes of play. Yeah. 
Well, take a look at this. Largest lead tonight. Old Dominion, eight points. And if Drexel didn't know it earlier, they certainly know now. They're in a battle here tonight. Nassanet. Taking it to the hole, blocked out of bounds by Ross. Oh, and he had touched it last. Well, it's ODU ball. Looks like Nassanet really trying to do too much that time there, Ron. But he's in a situation of all the players on Drexel's ball club, Mike, where he has to press it a little bit. When you look at their ball club right now, where are the points going to come from? It, it, it naturally is going to come from him, so he's going to have to press it just a bit. Dante Hill now puts ODU on top by 10. And I was just going to say the Dragons need a timeout, and they take one. This season in numerous games, what's it going to take, though, to try to finish here tonight? A lot of what they've displayed so far, their defensive intensity and their attention to detail on the defensive end has to be consistent as Ruffin gets an easy layup on the other end. We saw today in shoot around. John Richardson did an excellent job, the assistant coach for Old Dominion, at being specific in the certain key plays that Drexel ran this, uh, like, like the, that they like to run this year. They have to continue to lock in and get good shots offensively when they come down. Painter, and he hits a long jumper. It's a two to come right back. And put it back up to 10. It was an 11-0 run stopped by Ruffin's basket for Drexel, but an ODU counters. Massinet. Thomas. Caught in a double team, and now just four to shoot. Ruffin. And a good box out by Painter to get that rebound. Benton off the mark with a shot. Here's Damian Lee. Plows right over Dante Hill, and that was an easy one. Offensive foul. Old defensively on the big Drexel. Team high 12 points for Deshaun Painter as Old Dominion has the ball and a 10 point lead as we approach the halfway mark of this one here in Philly. Traveling on Benko. That's six turnovers by ODU. But 15 for Drexel, as you see why ODU has a 10-point lead. They've been taking care of the basketball. Drexel has not. And Old Dominion defensively tonight, Ron Thompson, really forcing Drexel into some tough shots. And that was their game plan when they came in. Don't bail out on plays. Make them take a lot of tough twos and make sure their defensive rotations are there. It almost seems like Old Dominion defensively, they know uh, Drexel's offense better than they do. They're adjusting and they're shifting in the nick of time every set. Nice fat pass inside from Hill, finding Ross. Largest lead of the night at a dozen. Aquil Younger now, blocked by Painter. Benton lays it in. The touchdown that you asked me, what did ODU have to do to maintain? It's for Old Dominion. Interim head coach Jim Corgan. First game here tonight as he closes out the rest of this season. As Old Dominion fired head coach Blaine Taylor on Tuesday. Drexel. Allen. He was fouled. 
Old Dominion is 2-20 and 20 on the season. 0-10 in, in the CAA. They've lost 10 in a row. Drexel, Ron, 9-13, and 5-5 and five in conference play. This is a huge ball game for the Dragons here in seventh place right now in the CAA at 5-5. Five and five. They need this one to kind of get themselves going a little bit. They were picked to finish first. And as we're in, we're in February right now, and we're approaching the month of March, you want to be playing your best basketball now. They want to start to pick up momentum, gain some type of uh, offensive continuity as they get ready for the conference tournament because you can. it doesn't matter what you do prior to the conference tournament. Once you get in tournament play, if things are clicking, then that's when, that's when you can really start to dance and get ready for postseason play. Look at this, leg to the floor for Ross, and he finishes. 11 tonight for Richard Ross, coming off a 13-point effort on Monday night. And the Monarchs are looking like they have in the past eight years when they average 24 wins a season. And that's not what Drexel needs, Allen on the miss. Benko, that's a trap. What happened on this? Well, Drexel right here, picked Ron. up in a full court press, and Old Dominion they lifted everyone closer to the ball and didn't have anyone back defensively as a safety. And Ross read it, faked up, and went long and got the easy dunk. Thomas floats it in at out, but a foul. Ross comes up with a second personal foul tonight for ODU. This is kind of a mountain to climb here for Drexel. They are not an offensive-minded team, Ron. They are ninth in the CAA in scoring their tops in defense, but... Well, in the first half, Massenet did a great job of carrying the load offensively. Here in the second half right now, he's 0 for 4. And then in addition to that, their leading scorer, Damian Lee, averaging 18 points a game. He's 0 for 3 here in the second half. He's yet to score. So they're really struggling to find and be able to manufacture points. Lane violation. Thomas will get another one. The difference here in this ball game, folks, for these two teams is that Drexel has the CAA tournament to look forward to and is in the back of their minds. No matter, you know, you obviously want to be playing good, Ron, but they know that they have a chance to potentially win the CAA and go to the NCAA tournament. Old Dominion does not. They are moving to Conference USA next year, so they are ineligible for the tournament. That's one thing that Jim Corrigan said, that that's been tough on these guys this year, not knowing they won't be able to have that opportunity. Well, in a lot of ways, right now, they're playing. Well, I'll tell you what, Northeastern make it. Old Dominion has been used to teams making runs on them all season. Right now, they're bringing it back. A 19-4 run and a foul. And Batten will shoot free throws when we come back. Surprising to say the least here tonight at Philly. We'll return. Be tightened up if they were going to try to grab some wins, and they've done that tonight. We saw that stat, the last win versus a CAA opponent on March 3rd of last year. It has been quite some time for Old Dominion. 0-10 in the CAA this season. Does it change here tonight? Still a ton of time here for the Dragons. They need to start to find the range. And so does this guy, Lee, who passes it up to Thomas. Thomas, he's got it. Now it comes down to defense on the other side of things for the Drexel Dragons. Exactly, a made basket, so Drexel needs to pick up four and look to be a little bit more aggressive than they were that last possession. Look to run and jump, look to track, start to take some, some calculated gambles. Hill. Painter for three. Look out! He has it going. He has it going, Mike. He's knocked down a few jump shots. 
You know, he's capable. He's more than capable at hitting that three-point jump shot. He's falling in love with it tonight, but it's going in. Third three-pointer of the night for Deshaun Painter with a team-high 50 points. And when you're feeling it, you're feeling it, and not that many times as old have been feeling it in the season. <laughs> exactly, but I think Painter in particular, he's done a good job at mixing it up. We've seen the last few possessions him taking the shot from the perimeter. But he's gone inside. He's gotten some action going towards the basket. He's gotten McCoy and Ruffin in foul difficulties. Masson at the free throw line right now. He's been scoreless the last 16 minutes. He had 15 points at the half, but is yet to score here in the second half. That's one of the main reasons Drexel is struggling mightily on the offensive end. Well, you're right. Those two free throws, his first points of the second half here, but Drexel is down 15. Going to need to force a couple turnovers here with full court pressure, not this time. But I like this action. They went and they tried to trap the first pass on the inbound. They did an excellent job at sprinting back, and now they can get their half court defense set. They go for Hill for three. That's no good. Here comes Damian Lee. Thomas, good luck. Count it. Again, now here comes the full court pressure. We'll look for them to try to make traps in the corners when the ball's inbounded. There it is. Timeout, says interim head coach Jim Corrigan. And his 17th is the 07 08 season. Painter another three, that one way off. Batten offensive rebound, tipped up and in by Wright. Masson in. Allen. And the look, whose ball is it, stays with Drexel. Good drive to the hole, draws the foul. I was going to say, Ron, it's not really the time of the game where you have to just settle all for three-pointers. You can take it in. That's a good play by Allen. It was. You know, and, and you have to be careful and make sure that you're the, the proper person is taking the three-point shot. Sometimes guys are left open outside the arc, and they're left open for a reason. Right. Six points now for Allen. Second foul on Nick Wright for ODU as Richard Ross returns to the Monarch lineup. And Painter takes a seat. Pressure. Hill. Right against Lee. Right is foul. Damian Lee. Initially, it looked like Lee was in good defensive position, giving Lee some resistance. But as Lee tries to back down and go into his turnaround jump shot, but there it is, right there on the elbow, on the follow through. Great call that time by Carl Hess. Nick Wright has another. Damian Lee going to stay in with four fouls, no points tonight. Was in foul trouble at Northeastern on Saturday. Only scored seven points. Season low. And it's been two frustrating games in a row for him. Massanet. Rough and tipped it way too hard. Rebound Ross. The 
way this game is going, Drexel's getting, we're slowly approaching the point where they're going to have to start thinking about fouling a little earlier to try to stop the clock. Shot clock down to eight. Three-pointer, look at that by Dante Hill. Back up to a 17-point lead for Old Dominion. Ross fouls Ruffin. Everything's fine for them tonight, Ron. <laughs> you know, Hill, you know, he's been struggling all year from the offensive end, but that time he got his feet set, good follow-through, good look, and he nailed it. Fine time for every one of the Monarch players to kind of step up and have their best game in the season, right? Well, no better time than the present. You know, coming into this game, you're 2-20. and 20. Your coach gets let go. You know, you, you know, sometimes uh, a changing of the guard brings a jolt of energy initially, and just hopefully they can sustain this going down the final stretch. You have to feel happy also for Jim Corrigan, his first game as a head coach at this level, and he's getting it done. It's been a tough week, to say the least, for everyone at Old Dominion with everything that has happened. Certainly wish Blaine Taylor well. An amazing job at ODU. going into the cheerleaders that time was Baco. I thought he decided to stay just a little long. A tournament. They have seven games remaining after tonight. Home against Northeastern Saturday and at Delaware on Monday. Ross, basket and a foul. Right here, Ross gets this basket just out of sheer energy, sheer effort. He wanted it a little bit more than Drexel did, and he was able to get the end right. I like the comment that you made, Ron, about, I mean, outside of the coaching change, which obviously is huge, it's like, what are they doing so well here tonight that they have not been doing, and how do you continue it? Well, on the defensive end, the communication has been high. Uh, offensively, as we touched on, they've been efficient. And I'm sure Jim Corgan, if he can bottle the effort and the focus that they've had to this game and pull it out of these last seven games that he'll have after tonight, I'm sure he would. He would. I'll tell you who's watching this game very intently is the Northeastern Huskies who will travel to ODU on Saturday as driving in this Baco. Things today are just going the right way for Old Dominion. Play, so a lot of these plays that they've done offensively, they, they, they did earlier in the year. Shots just didn't fall. They struggled to score. Tonight, the rim seems as big as the ocean. And you don't see this that often as the Drexel Dragons are in danger of getting run out of their own building, the DAC, here in Philly. And the crowd is really quieted down. Just not what they expected here tonight. Travel by Ross. And Ross, 12 of his 14 have come here in the second half. Hill, 7 of his 9. And Wright, all 7 of his points have come here in the second half. Dragon fans, band members, everyone's trying to figure out what the heck is going on here tonight in Philadelphia. Their team is down by 18 points to the last place team of the CAA. And here's how we got to this point with just under three minutes to go with Old Dominion on top by 18 points. Turnovers, big problem for Drexel tonight. A lot of them in the first half, they've got this thing started for ODU. That's what's gotten it done. The job that they've done at turning Drexel over a team that you know, is, is prided itself on taking care of the ball. And then Deshaun Painter, he's been the guy for them, especially when things have slowed down and sputtered. He knocked down shots from the perimeter, as we saw early in the first half. He did a good job at mixing it up, getting Drexel's bigs in foul trouble. And then, you know, Ross has just been a total jolt of energy here in the second half. Fouls on Richard Ross is fourth for ODU. No mojo at all coming from the Drexel bench, and this one really is far from over. Good steal. Allen lays it in. Let's see if that gets somebody up. Batten is fouled. As Jake Lerner is in, the junior from right out of here in Philadelphia, called for the foul. And, you know, Ron, I mean, 14 points. Yeah, it's a 
decent deficit here. And I know there's only 2.42 to go, but a shot here, a stop there. I mean, like you had said earlier, you got to start fouling. You never know. Well, and that's why uh, Old Dominion has to make sure that they don't relax. You know, act like they've been here before, finish the game plan, stay solid, and you have to know that Drexel is going to try to have, is going to try to be extra aggressive because if the official doesn't call it, they have nothing to lose. Here's the last play. Whoa, that trip, yeah. Yeah, got tangled up a little bit. Their feet got a little mixed up. Batten converts. The lead is back to 16. Younger to the hole. Rebound McCoy for the putback. Two and a half to go. Full court press here again by the Dragons. Turnover. Out of bounds, brings the ball. I really like that when the intensity of the level rises, Jim Corrigan gets calmer. And that's a good sign because you have to know your ball club's been in this situation before. They've made some mistakes before, but you don't want them to get tight. If you see him on the sideline, he's very calm, very relaxed. Thomas to the basket for two. Another tough pass, almost intercepted. Wright is fouled by Younger. Great job. Great job. That's a great job. Oh, no, I'm oh, yeah, I know. That's a great job. I just kind of have to look at it here for a sec, Ron, in terms of who's on the court right now for the Dragons. Allen, Younger, Lerner, who has not played at all this season. I feel like maybe Bruiser Flynn is trying to send a message right now no, he's to some of his top guys. The message has been sent. You know, you got Massinet on the side, you've got Lee on the side. Right. You know, you're your main go-to guys that just, in his eyes, I'm sure, he wishes they've played a little bit better, so he's going with some other guys. We'll find out how Drexel regroups from this if the message was received. Wright with a free throws. He's got nine. All in the second half. Allen on the spin and puts it in. And now Baco is fouled. So it's a 12-point ball game with just a minute and 37 to go. And Daryl McCoy has fouled out for Drexel. McCoy fouls out with eight points and seven rebounds. Bruiser Flight is just disgusted here tonight. What happens as a coach, you know, you spend a lot of time, a lot of energy game planning. You know, you try different ways to reach your guys. And when things just don't go right, you, you, sometimes you search. And, and, and tonight, Drexel just didn't, they didn't have enough guys to make plays. Massinet was that scoring threat that they needed in the first half, but he needed some assistance in the second half, and they just weren't able to knock down shots. And then also, defensively, I don't think that Drexel in their half-court defense gave enough resistance to the job that Old Dominion was doing in terms of executing their, their offense. Drexel defensively in the half-court could have done a much better job. Traveling violation on ODU, so Drexel Ball. For those of you looking to tune in to the latest Costas tonight, it's coming up immediately following our game. So stay tuned for Costas tonight right here on the NBC Sports Network. Mike Corey and former Georgetown Hoya and college head coach Ron Thompson here tonight from the DAC in Philadelphia. Old Dominion, last place in the CAA, no wins in conference play. Drexel at 5-5 five and five in the league. And the Monarchs by 12. Thomas. Rejected by Wright. And Painter gets it ahead to Dante Hill. And it looks like for the Ultimate Monarchs, 
that have not won since December 22nd when they beat Virginia in Richmond are about to change that stat. Baco, Painter, and he almost nailed that one. I tell you, Old Dominion, they brought 20 fans with them, and they've been louder than this Drexel crowd all night. Providing a lot of support for the Monarchs here tonight on the road, and they can just run it out now. Unbelievable. Blaine Taylor, the head coach, gets let go on Tuesday. Jim Corgan, a 19-year assistant, takes over. First game as the interim head coach. And he couldn't have asked for anything more.